And now, a fireside chat with Arthur Bergeron. Hi, uh, and welcome to this fireside chat. My name is uh, Arthur Bergeron. Uh, I'm an uh, elder law attorney. I work at Myrick O'Connell. The purpose of these fireside chats is to answer the questions that I most commonly hear from folks who are talking to me. It's really meant to supplement the broader issues that I uh, usually cover when I do presentations at councils on aging in this area. Um, I am uh, doing these fireside chats as a call-in show. So if you are interested, you may want to call in. I, I think I actually have a call in right now from somebody, yes? Yes, hello, it's Frank again. Frank, it's so nice to hear from you again. It's nice to speak with you as well. We were talking to some friends of ours about getting a reverse mortgage. But they told us that if we did, we'd have to give the bank our home. How do reverse mortgages work anyway? So that particular myth, the one you just heard, that if you get a reverse mortgage, you have to give the bank your home, is one of a number of myths related to reverse mortgages, which tend to be the reason why people don't even consider them. I have recommended reverse mortgages to countless clients who are seniors, who, who own their home, typically mortgage-free or with a small mortgage on it that they're still paying the mortgage, um, but who don't have a lot of income. They may have some additional assets, some cash, um, but, they, don't, but they, they are getting older. They want to stay in their home, but they don't want to be stressed out all the time thinking that if there's an emergency that happens, if something happens to the home, if the roof goes, if the boiler goes, that they're going to be having to be, be strapped regarding how to keep their home up. Or if they need some additional home care in order to stay home, how are they going to pay for it? The answer often is a reverse mortgage. To understand what a reverse mortgage is, you need to start off by understanding what a home equity loan is. So for those of you who don't, haven't heard that term, although I would be surprised if you haven't, uh, a home equity loan is typically a loan that you would get from the bank, um, to, um, which is basically a line of credit. You get a line of credit from the bank uh, and the bank will give you the ability to borrow. Basically, you get a credit card that is secured by your house. You get a line of credit. Say Frank and Mary owned a house that was worth $300,000. They could probably get a home equity loan on their home for half, at least half of that for $150,000. And, the, and they would give the bank a promissory note, a promise to pay the money back, but the terms would be that if they didn't borrow any money on that line of credit, they wouldn't owe any of it back. And if they did, if they borrowed some of the money on that line of credit, say they borrowed $30,000, from the day they borrowed that amount, they would start paying interest or owing interest on that amount, which they would have to pay in monthly installments. So they need to pay monthly installments on the amount that was borrowed. Um, the entire principal of the line of credit, though, would not be due, typically unless they sold the home uh, or unless they died, or typically in the case of lines of credit, unless a given number of years had expired, usually 10 years. But the key to understand about a home equity loan is that once you've borrowed money off of it, you have a monthly payment that you, that you need to pay, and if you don't pay it, then the bank can call the note in default. So a, line, a, a reverse mortgage is basically the same thing as a home equity loan. Um, you go to a bank or a mortgage company that, will, that gives these. Uh, the, 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 the bank or mortgage company will do an appraisal of your house and they will give you a line of credit equal to a percentage of the value of the appraisal which is related directly to your age. So the older you are, the greater the percentage of the value of the home that will be given to you in your reverse mortgage. Um, when it, it, and, you will, and what you will give the, the bank is you'll give them that a line of credit promissory note that says that you don't owe any money until you've borrowed some. Um, and, but once you've borrowed some, interest will start accruing. That note, just like your home equity loan, will be secured by a mortgage on the premises. But the difference is that if you borrow some of the money and you start owing interest on the amount that you have borrowed, that money does not become due until you sell the house or die or stop living in the house for 365 consecutive days. 
In other words, there is no monthly payment that has to be paid on a reverse mortgage. So if you're in that situation where you either, either have an existing equity loan that is coming due because more than 10 years have expired, or where because of your income, um, you're limited in the amount that you can pay every month and you don't wanna be paying that monthly payment that has to be paid regarding your home equity loan, right? Or if you need money for a home repair or to buy more home care, or just because you wanna know, you wanna know that in the event that you needed a large chunk of money, you could get to it quickly, right? Then you may very well wanna take out a reverse mortgage. Remember, if you take out the reverse mortgage, there are no monthly payments. The, it, 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 to the extent that you wanna make monthly payments, you certainly can. If you don't though, all that happens is the amount that you would have owed in interest every month simply gets added at the end of that month to the amount that's owed in principal. As a result, the monthly, the monthly payment, the amount that is owed the following month goes up by, up by a very, very small amount, the amount that's outstanding plus the amount of that interest. And then the next month, the, the amount of interest that is owed is a little bit higher because it's on a slightly bigger amount of principal. So it may be that this is an ideal tool for you. Once again, the mortgage does not come due unless you sell the house, just like when, uh, in, your, in your, uh, your home equity loan, uh, or if you die, but in the case of a reverse mortgage, instead of the note and mortgage being due on the day of your death, it's due one year following the day of your death, right? So that your children or whoever be, becomes the owner of the house following your death have one year from the date of your death to sell it, to sell your house and pay off the mortgage. And once again, you're just paying off the amount that was owed, the amount that was borrowed plus the amount of the interest. Um, or to refinance. If they, if say that your kids wanna live in your house, they could refinance, go and look for a mortgage themselves since they'll be the owner of occupants, pay off the reverse mortgage, then they'll need to get themselves a conventional loan. No, note. One final note, as I mentioned earlier, um, the unusual condition in the reverse mortgage is that it becomes due if you haven't lived in the house for 365 consecutive days. Therefore, if it turns out that you need to move out of the house, that you are living someplace else, that you are in a nursing home, that for some reason you're out of the house, you do need to come back to the house one day out of the year. Um, as long as you do that, however, you have not violated any of the conditions of the reverse mortgage. Now I'm gonna mention one other thing. One of the advantages of reverse mortgage versus a usual home equity loan is that if you have it, and then, and then because you wanna do elder, some asset protection planning and you've talked to an elder lawyer about it, you wanna convey out either to your kids or to an irrevocable trust for the benefit of your kids, an interest in the property, typically a remainder interest, but you wanna keep a life estate in your house. If you do that, that restructuring and that conveyance out is not a violation of the reverse mortgage. If you had a home equity loan, it would be a violation of the home equity loan. So I'm not telling you that you, sh that you need a reverse mortgage or that you have to have it. I am just telling you that for many of my clients who want to stay at home, who want to stay at home, this is an ideal tool for them to be able to stay at home while at the same time not increasing their monthly expenses. I hope this has clarified some of your questions regarding reverse mortgages. If you have others, before you actually go get one, you may want to talk to your attorney about it. Uh, thank you for joining me. I look forward to, uh, to uh, talking to you uh, in another of my fireside chats. Thank you.